Hello, this is Donnie Smith, and today we're going to talk about paint guns and paint gun adjustments. And uh, the different type of paint guns, about what most painters use in the automotive industry is what's called gravity feed, and it's HVLP, which stands for high volume, low pressure. And what that is, that's where the fluid comes, and it's fed by gravity, it's into the paint gun and sprayed onto the surface. The, uh, this paint gun is one that we use for our waterborne, spraying the base coat on. This is probably one of the my favorite guns and, and most of the students' favorite guns. And what it is is a WADA uh, Supernova. And it works real well. And it also works good for clear. They make another, uh, this is a 1.3. They make another uh, nozzle size, tip size, that is a 1.4 that some painters prefer for, for clear coat rather than the 1.3 to get you know the fluid on there a little bit heavier. But um, I prefer to use the 1.3 for clear as well. But we're going to talk about a few of the gun adjustments. The first thing is uh, the air pressure. And you see I have a gauge right here and I can adjust the air pressure right here. And the problem with this is whenever you go looking on your technical data sheets, a lot of times it says the PSI at the air cap. That's talking about how much pounds is it actually getting right here. And I don't see too many. I've seen a couple of guns. But most guns don't have a, a uh, gauge up here. And, that's, and what's going in is not what's coming out, so it's going to be different. So that's why I like to adjust it right here. In most products, uh, you know, spraying is going to be somewhere between 18 and 25 PSI at the gun. Now, another, one other way this may be set is at the wall, and that's where you adjust it at the wall and then hook it in. You don't have this regulator. But if you do it that way, and some painters do prefer to do it to a little more accuracy, but if you do that, You've got to consider for each foot of hose, there's going to be a drop in pressure. So you've got to, you know, figure that out and determine it out. So what I recommend is just finding out what the, at the gun pressure is, using one of these gauges. It's the most simple way. And then uh, fine tune it from there. Because each gun may be at a little bit different. Uh, it may uh, have, a, like if it's a 20 PSI, it may not be the, the 8 to 10 or whatever it's supposed to be here. It's usually about double down here uh, as far as PSI. So if it says 8 to 10, you know, I'd probably go with, you know, 18 to 22 PSI at the gun. Okay, talk about the adjustments. We talked about the air. Now we're going to talk about the fan pattern. That's how wide the fan pattern is. And you usually want a pretty wide fan pattern. Uh, some painters like to have it open all the way, but I've found that if you have it too wide open, it kind of creates a, a dry overspray and you can't really get the achieved uh, effect that you're wanting. So I usually open it up all the way and turn in about three or four turns or whenever you, you if you spray it, you kind of start seeing it to uh, narrow down and then I'll narrow it just a little bit more. That's good for base coat. Now clear coat, I don't want it as wide. I want to narrow it even more so that I get a full wet coat. Because base coat, you don't want it too thick. You just want a medium wet coat, a good even coat, spreads the metallics or paint, you know, the pigment out. And then the clear coat, you know, you want to put that on really uh, nice and thick to get your meals and uh, and all that. So uh, turn it in just a little bit from full width. Now, if you're painting a little primer spot on a car, obviously, you know, you're going to narrow that down. You're going to decrease your, your fluid and your air pressure, and you'll prime just a little spot. But for the most part, paint a full panel, uh, a complete, you know, that's, that's kind of some general idea of where to adjust it. Now this adjusts your fluid here, and basically all that does is control how far this needle, needle pulls back. And you can see as I turn that in, you can see that that trigger is pushing out. So it's kind of like a water fountain. The more you screw it in, the less you're going to get until you turn it completely off. And when you open it, it allows the trigger to go back further, the more fluid you're going to get. So clockwise is going to decrease, counterclockwise is going to increase the fluid. And the way I usually adjust that is I pull it all the way back and start screwing it in until I start feeling the trigger move. So you have to have it hold, held back to feel that. I'm feeling it moving, and then I'll usually turn it about three turns and then see how that's spraying. For clear coat, that's usually a good setting. Now base coat, I don't want the full wet, I want a medium wet, so I'm using this for the the waterborne base coat, I'll probably give it a couple more turns and then kind of uh, give my test pattern that I'm spraying on 
and see how that is. And then you're going to have to fine tune it from there to see if, if that's uh, what you like or not. If you spray it and you see that it's uh, kind of dry, you can increase the fluid. If you spray it and see that it's just making runs and heavy orange peel, uh, you know, you can decrease the fluid. So, um, so we've talked about the air pressure, we've talked about the, uh, the fan pattern. And some guns, the fan pattern, the fluid's always going to be right here because it controls that needle right there. So it's always going to be right behind the needle. The fan may come in different areas. For example, this is the, the fan on this gun. It's over here. It does the exact same thing. Notice this one has a cup and this one doesn't. This is a system set up for the 3M disposable cups. You just hook that and uh, when you're done, you can just take it off and uh, a lot easier to clean up that way. This is this is the system that I really like using. So we're going to talk about uh, gun techniques just a little bit. Uh, you know, if I could give you one piece of advice, you know, it's just to be real consistent. Uh, being a good painter is about being really consistent. You know, at the factories they have uh, robots that do the exact same thing every time. If you can do that, the exact same thing every time, you know, that, that you'll have it down. Because the speed and distance, you know, that's what you have to adjust the speed with the distance and that's going to uh, make a difference. So if you can think like a robot, I'm going to do this for example, if you can think like a robot and this has to be straight, you don't want to be like that because if it is, it's going to be heavy up here and light down here. So you can't shoot like that, you have to be straight. And you just want to go the same speed every time. And, and you don't want to arch either. Arch is where you kind of lock your wrist and you go like that. It may look, in some of the videos you've seen, that's kind of how painters paint, but it's not really. They're keeping it straight. You have to bend your wrist to keep it straight. And then to realign with the other panel, that's where you kind of come out, but you're actually letting off just to the air. And by the time it hits the panel right, you pull it again. Notice that there's really not much straight areas on the car either. I mean, this gun, you couldn't just keep it like this the whole time. So you've got to kind of follow whatever contour you're following. So you got to keep it straight by bending your wrist, and you've also got to follow the contours of the car. So if you keep that in mind, and, and, and no arching, and uh, pull halfway, and again, I didn't mention this, but if you pull halfway, that shoots just the air and you're not having any paint. And that's whenever you adjust your air pressure here to the 20 PSI or whatever it is. So get that adjusted, so you're full, you always keep that uh, press down all the way where we have it set at. Just air, realign, pull down again. And so you want to keep it straight. You don't want to arch, you know, except just for realigning. And when you do arch out, you want to be sure that the, the trigger is released halfway. And then whenever you line back up with the panel, then it's pulled back. Another thing you want to concentrate on is your speed and distance. Uh, recommended to kind of start with 8 to 10 inches, that's going to give you more control and, uh, you know, about that speed right there. So, keep about 8 to 10 inches away and remember, if you get closer, you're going to have to move faster. If you get further away, like you're reaching over and you don't want nothing to touch and you have to get a little further away, you know, you're going to have to slow down. So, that's just kind of some uh, things you have to get used to working with the speed and distance together. Now that is kind of hard and confusing at first, but you kind of get a touch for it and you'll develop your own style and you know it becomes second nature to you. One last thing, like if you are having to reach over something, if you're short like me, you may have problems reaching over the hoods and things like that. Sometimes you might have to hold the gun like this. Or you can hold the gun like that for the most part. And sometimes getting under things, you know you can even hold the gun like that. So you three different positions you have. To hold the gun. So that basically covers your paint gun adjustments and some of your techniques.